two months ago, at hour 19 of a 20-hour flight from Israel to San Diego, I saw an email from my stepmother, Sherry. Subject line, please call. No text in the body, just love, Sherry. Daddy had gotten sick the week before when I left for Israel, and over the last few days, he'd gotten worse. On his birthday, two days prior, his failing lungs could barely whisper a thank you to my birthday song. When I saw Sherry's email, I, I panicked. I emailed everyone who knew her, my ex-husband, my ex-in-laws, my kids, my best friend Iris. Subject line, daddy's dying, call Sherry. I waited 20 minutes, no one responded. The fear possessed my body like the prickles in your skin when your foot falls asleep. Finally, 25 minutes later, Iris replied, Sherry told me not to tell you, but I know you want to know. He's gone. I'm sorry. I love you. Stan Kessel, may he rest in peace. 35,000 feet in the air, I learned daddy. My 72-year-old father had passed away. I started sobbing. I became that emotional woman on the plane that nobody wants to be near. I counted the next 3,600 seconds until the plane landed. As soon as I got off the plane, I called Sherry. Sh Sherry, I I'm so sorry. <gasps> I know, I can't believe he's gone. Sherry, I just landed from Israel. I'll grab the boys and we'll fly out tomorrow. What time's the funeral? You see, when you're Jewish, we bury our dead as quickly as possible. There will be no funeral. Don't fight me on this. I'm not going to bury your father. My tsunami of grief turned into a volcano ready to erupt. Sherry, what are you going to do with his body? I'm going to cremate him. My heart sank. I fought every fiber in my body from howling in fury. Sherry, you know we Jews don't cremate. Hitler cremated the Jews. We don't do that to ourselves. Well, cremation's making a comeback with the Jews. There's even a cremation place in Florida. But they're too expensive, of course. $3,300? Ridiculous! Can you believe it? I even looked at the itemized price list. They charge you to wash his body. Oh my God, who cares if he's clean? You're gonna cremate him anyway. <laughs> but great news. I found a bargain down the street at a non-denominational place. They're gonna cremate daddy for only $800. I'll send you some ashes if you like. Did, did she just say she got a bargain on cremating daddy? Yeah, I felt like I was uh, and on the bad sitcom in hell. Um, I wasn't prepared for what was to come next. Guess what I'm going to do with his ashes? Daddy and I used to joke, when he'd die, I'd hire a plane and I'd have it fly over Bowling Green, Kentucky and drop his ashes over the Corvette factory. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, 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 I know. Daddy loved Corvettes more than his children and, and all the women he'd ever loved. In his life, uh, Daddy owned 17 Corvettes all of them white, uh, convertibles with red le uh, leather interior. He never let me drive one, just pose in pictures. Um, <laughs> lovely, lovely, I have no grave to visit daddy, but actually, I'd be lucky. Whenever I missed daddy, I didn't have to go to the cemetery. I could go to the Corvette showroom and cry over the 2018 and up models. <laughs> yeah, okay, but uh, there was no fighting Sherry. Sherry loved daddy with every ounce of her being, and she was loyal. She was loyal to him for those 10 years where I wasn't. She stood by his side when he was still using and dealing cocaine. I didn't. 
She supported him in getting clean and his devotion to Narcotics Anonymous. She was there when he began, began to help countless self-destructive souls find redemption, sobriety, and a reason to live. I wasn't going to fight her. Daddy was her rock, but he was also mine. But that came after a long, rocky past. I knew in my heart she was honoring his wishes, but being a traditional Jew, I hated the fact that my father would become a pile of ashes. When a Jew dies, there's a rich tradition around the burial and mourning process. A secret society of volunteers called the Hevra Kadisha watch over the dead and prepare the body for bur burial. They purify it. They wrap it in a white shroud and put it in a simple pine box. And the, they guard <coughs> its soul until it's laid to rest. At the funeral, the guests leave the gravesite and they go to a house of mourning where for seven days the grieving family sits shiva. Shiva means seven in Hebrew. <coughs> for seven days, guests come and go. They bring food, they share stories, and the grieving family recites the Jewish mourner's prayer three times a day, surrounded by family and friends. Sitting Shiva is a deeply healing ritual where the mourners are enveloped by the love of their community. There would be no Shiva for daddy. Sherry was culturally Jewish, but she wasn't observant like me. She couldn't understand my pain. We came to a compromise. I would hold a memorial service at my home in San Diego with my rabbi and san synagogue community, and she'd hold a memorial service in their home in Florida with a rent-a-rabbi for their neighbors and narcotic anonymous friends. The memorial service I had at my home wasn't perfect, but it was spiritual. My rabbi came and, and held a traditional prayer service, and my synagogue song leader came and chanted the prayers. The ancient melodies comforted my soul. I was really touched. 75 of my friends came to show their respects. The problem was the only person who'd ever met daddy besides my three sons was my ex-boyfriend of 25 years ago, Michael Berg. Michael's, Michael's a great guy. When we dated, he was a criminal defense attorney who only defended violent criminals up for death row. Murderers really loved Michael because he was also a magician and he taught them tricks like how to cut up a woman and make her disappear. <laughs> Daddy loved Michael, which was important since Daddy's father was a Jewish gangster. In Daddy's family, if you're loyal, they'll kill for you. If you're disloyal, the opposite. Daddy was my protector. Knowing he's gone means I lost my rock and my defender. Daddy would always say, one phone call. Which meant, <laughs> if anyone fuck with me or my children, one call to daddy and they were taken care of. I've lost my one phone call for the first time in years. I felt scared. But there was one other man who made me feel safe besides daddy, Michael. Daddy knew and he valued that. When, da when Michael and I dated, daddy would call with us both and he'd always end each call with, Michael, you take good care of my daughter. <laughs> daddy would have been thrilled if, when Michael would speak at his memorial service after the mourner's prayers and a meal and remarks by me and my boys. Michael began his eulogy. Audrey's father, Stan Kessel, was a man of strong principles who loved fiercely and gave generously. Michael spoke lovingly of Daddy with a smile and a twinkle in his eye. He shared how he was with me on Father's Day 24 years ago when I called Daddy for the first time in 10 years. Michael held me when daddy said three years after we stopped speaking, he OD'd on cocaine because he was so sad he couldn't celebrate my 15th birthday with me. 
My birthday is the day daddy got clean and he stayed sober for 31 years until he died. My birthday became daddy's rebirth. Michael then shared how over the next year he enjoyed watching my relationship with daddy grow and blossom. I love seeing old photos of daddy and learning about his past and seeing his, uh, how much he loved to live life to the fullest like me and how he uh, would be at family bar mitzvahs with his Jufro and cigarette hanging out of his mouth. I finally learned that my college days of underground club go-go dancing skills were actually an inherited trait. <laughs> Michael also told stories of how I got to know Daddy as a thoughtful, generous, and powerful man. And Daddy got to know me as a brave, vivacious, and loving woman. He was proud. I became the light of his life. As the weeks go by and I continue to mourn Daddy daily, I'm surprised with what memories I cherish most. It's not his fierce strength in how he lived or loved. It's his dark and often foul sense of humor. <laughs> For the past 24 years since we reconnected, every Friday afternoon I'd call Daddy to wish him a Shabbat Shalom, a peaceful and, and joyous Sabbath. However, if I didn't call on Friday and I called on Saturday and Sunday, he'd answer the phone. Oh, is this my daughter? You're out of the will. <laughs> as quickly as he'd joke about cutting me off, I, I knew how much he loved me and my boys with a fierce devotion. Each one of my sons developed their own close relationship with their poppy. One of my last memories was this past December when I went to Florida by myself to visit Daddy and Sherry. One night, my 18-year-old son, Gabriel, called to announce he got his first acceptance letter to an art school, the School of the Art Institute in Chicago. He wanted his poppy to be the first to know. Daddy put him on speaker, and, and we both shared our excitement. But as soon as we hung up, I began to worry. Daddy, how the hell am I going to pay for this? It's 60 grand a year, and, and it's in Chicago. Oinka fault he doesn't even own a coat. Oi. What, what if after a year he decides he wants to be an engineer and, 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 and I throw away all that money on art school? Oi, <sighs> can you be happy for one second? Somebody thinks your kid's got fucking talent. Enjoy it, damn it. <laughs> I pouted. Daddy gave me a look. He stood up. He stuck st foot, one foot behind him and thrust the other in front. And he said, stop kvetching. If you got one foot in the past and one foot in the future, you're pissing on the present. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for making me laugh these last 24 years. Thank you for opening your heart to me and the hundreds of others that also felt you were their rock, protector, and a consistent source of unconditional love. I pray that I can be the rock to my sons the way you were to me. Daddy, and life is in, in death. I will know you always love me and will always make me laugh. Stan Kessel of blessed memory, may you rest in peace. I promise I will never again piss on the present. Audrey Jacobs. <laughs>